All right, so this corner talks about the um, ongoing trial where various um, the members of the one gang were being put on trial, um, and they talk about the 2008 murder of Douglas Chamber, which I have, which I have been known about though, because I remember Douglas Chamber as he was a former chairman uh, GUTC, and then he left. He was in a meeting, then he went out, I think, to take a cigarette break, if I remember. And that was the last moments of Earth because he was set up to be killed. And yeah, we hear stories about this all on from the, over the years. And yeah, it basically tied Tesha Miller to it because it, they said that hey, some people wanted to get Douglas Chambers out of the picture. And they paid um, Tesha Miller um, to, um, to get rid of him. Um, to have some people get rid of him. But let's go. So, a former high, former high ranking member of the one Don gang testified yesterday that the reputed leader told that he murdered former Jamaica Urban Transit Company Chairman Douglas Chambers. He was gunned down at GUTC depot in Spanish Town, St. Catherine in 2008. Chambers was reportedly killed because of obstruction he was carrying out at the state owned bus company, which reportedly afflict, affected the collection of extortion monies. Reporter, reputed leader of the one Don gang, Andrew Blackman Branch, charged with murder, but was acquitted as so not guilty. Reputed leader of the Clansman gang, Tesha Miller, was, however, last year found guilty accessory born after, after fact in relation to Chambers' death. But yesterday, the prosecution witness testified that Brian had reportedly confirmed about, confiding about the murder and this plan to dispose of the murder weapons. And he used it. He basically said that he had a gun that used to kill Douglas Chambers. Um, and that he, that Chambers was a threat, um, a threat to a lot of people, ex gangs and extortionists. And some other people outside of that that they're not mentioning. That he, he had to go to send a message. According to the witness, Brian also told him that he gave a man called Marlon the gun sell the strict instructions. The witness said that Brian told the man, the man that the gun must have sold in Clarendon on our parish, but he did not want it in St. Catherine. The witness made the disclosure while testifying that the gang would have meetings specific members about contract killings that he was not invited to those meetings or privy to the information. The prosecution witness said that he joined the gang in 2016. Also, the court that he had to act as a lookout man while alleged members of the gang reported to kill a man buried in St. Catherine. The witness was testifying by a link in the home court, testified to alleged members of the gang who he caught easy, um, who usually defended Marco Miller and Jim Brown, not the actual one, but someone who's adapted his moniker, defendant Dwight Hall, police stabbed the man to death. This is not the same through Douglas Chambers, but they told another death um, while they were at the party in St. Catherine in the morning. So, yeah. Yeah, this this more stuff is coming out though. I me, mean, yeah, I, I remember the thing with Douglas Chambers, and yeah, there was a lot of rumors going. He he stepped on a lot of toes, and when he stepped on toes, mean some very morally unsavory people's toes, and they said, you know what? Yeah, we, we have to get him. We have to take him out, and yeah, there you go. But. Yeah, this trial is very, very important. It's going to see who's going to be convicted, who's not. Because yeah, cause they're going to say, okay, hey, if they get convicted, how many people are going to be sunk? If they get bullshit charges, you know what the game really is. And I'll leave it at that. So, this is what State of Jamaican career. Check out my YouTube page, Miles Goose and Fern, Miles Productions, with thoughts and miles. All right.